James Lacton, delighted to be joined with Alex Matvienko. Alex, how are you, mate? Yeah, good, thank you. Really good, thank you. Good stuff. Uh, not long back from Saudi Arabia. Obviously, you've been in the corner with Tommy Fury. I've been working with Tommy in the gym during camp as well. Uh, first of all, just sum up the experience in a whole. Um, I've been quite lucky over my um, training career to be involved in some big fights. You know, I did the Sergio Martinez with Martin Murray, um, and that that was a big event as well. Um, this was slightly, slightly a bit different. It was more. I'm not sure the words to say it, and I've only had a few hours sleep to be honest after after all the travelling. But um, it, it was very extravagant. You know, there was a lot of money spent. You could see that they'd spent a lot of money on it. Um, like boxing in the Boca Junior Stadium was a bit more sort of rough, and you know, the, the, it was quite rough really. But in this, you know, they really gone all out and spent a lot of money. Um, on the production, you know, the, the stadium they threw up in about seven days and it was brilliant. Um, yeah, it, it, it was definitely a first, you know, completely different experience to being stuck in the Boca Juniors Stadium with uh, about 30 St. Helens fans in a caged, like, little caged area. Um, yeah, it, it was, yeah, it was good. It was it was a good experience. I want to mention, I see an interview with Jimmy Harrison come out and... Um, he mentioned that it was quite hostile. Um, sounds like after the fight, um, he was threatened. He, you know, this and that. There's a bit of, bit of handbags going on by the sounds of things. Did you experience any of that? Um, you know, like when you're boxing, you do tend to, you know, sometimes the teams are there's a bit of friction in there. Um, I think with the Americans, they're more so like that. You know, you get a few like heckles and stuff. So when we was when we come to the press conference, a couple of the team were heckling us. Um, which I noticed, which I thought was a bit, I, I thought, it, for one, it was a bit stupid, probably suicidal, because when you're heckling John, it's probably not the best idea. And then when you know Tyson's going to turn up, to be honest, Tyson weren't at the press conference at that point. He, he made it just as it was starting, so uh, he, he was probably regretting it straight away. I think he was wearing his nappy after that. Um, but yeah, so th there was a bit of heckling as we were walking through. I seen one of the lads who... who um, he was having a pop with one of our one of our team at one point, um, and and to be honest, it did annoy me. But it's not even worth getting involved, you know. It's all about the fighter, and once the coaches get emotional, the fighter's going to get emotional, and it's about keeping the fighter calm, especially like with with, with Tommy. So, um, there, yeah, there, there was a bit of heckling going on, and then I think it sort of carried on through. To, our, to to the fight and then obviously a few things got said at the fight and stuff but for my personal experience you know everything everything was cool everything was cool apart from obviously you know the bit of heckling and stuff yeah one thing that shocks me when I watched it on TV was the amount of fans that were on Tommy's side I had expected it to be more for Jake as it's an MVP promotion show etc and he got booed as he came to the ring and during a fight and Tommy got cheered all the way through. So yeah. that's you and the team. Um, it, it it was it was the same at the press conference and the weigh-in. You know, I was surprised at the weigh-in. So when they did the weigh-in, um, Tommy got a really good ovation. And then as as Jake come out, he got really booed at the weigh-in, and you could see it. It got to him a little bit, you know, because this guy's all for likes. It's all for social media likes and stuff. And I think he even got the mic at one point saying, you guys are all booing me, you know, at the press conference. And I was giggling. And I'm booing him as we're walking around the back of the stage, leaving. I'm like, boo. I'm thinking this is, you know, it's good stuff. And then on the night, the, the people really got behind him. And I think they like the, I think the Saudis like the Fury family. They're a good family, close knit. You know, it's all about family. Um, they're, they're a religious family, very religious, you know, um, uh, and I think the, the people love them. You know, they, these people really do love the Furies. I think it, they won the fans over. Uh, Jake was trying to make every everything hard work, the obstacles, everything hard work, and was probably hoping that you know he'd win the fans over as well. But now nah, it seemed to me like a lot, a lot of the people loved the Furies. You mentioned a minute ago as well about keeping Tommy calm in situations after the fight when he was announced as a winner. It was very, very emotional. You could tell that almost a weight of his shoulders, a pressure had been released, and it it meant a lot to him in that fight. 
what was sort of mentioned in the build up before the fight or after the fight in regards to the team was did you guys know there was that much pent up pressure in Tommy? He kind of disguises it quite well, and uh, I think I think he's always been around pressure, being around Tyson, Tyson's younger brother, being around his dad, um, and and I think he's sort of probably got coping mechanisms that he's got, you know, that he's built up and he deals with. So to be honest, in the build up, you know, when you're speaking to him, he wasn't like you know dead worried about stuff. You know, he wasn't, you know, like. Um, getting all frustrated, say if he didn't have the perfect spar or if he's cutting a bit of weight and feels a little bit lethargic, he wouldn't like spit his dummy out and stuff. You know, he's quite a calm, you know, he, I, th I think he's very good at coping with stuff, really good. Because you see guys at le lesser levels, central area, British or what, English or European or world, and and they, they just, uh, they fold under that pressure. But I think for like I know it was an eight rounder, and uh, but that was a massive, massive, massive fight to go into, and this has been a build up of like three years. So that pressure, like you say, must have been serious pressure cooker, and you could see it as as the emotions come out. Uh, you know, it, it was just overwhelming for him. So you know, it, it's unbelievable what he achieved really at twenty three year old. You know, that that's a lot of pressure, a lot of people hating him. A lot of obstacles Jake Paul putting in front of him, you know, making the fight dead quick for February, knowing that he just had a baby and, you know, constant obstacles. So, yeah, you know, unbelievable, unbelievable. In regards to the actual fight itself, um, it was, we, everyone thought it was a slip. However, he did get counted, so it did get classed as um, a knockdown for Jake Paul. Was it ever a worry for you guys that, that he might be taken out of your hands when it went to the scorecards. It's always a worry, isn't it? When it goes to the score, it's always a worry, especially when you've got one US judge. You know, it's always going to be a worry. You're already up against it. Um, and yeah, and he's the B-side, no matter what, Tommy with the B-side. You know, so it, yeah, I had that in my mind all the time, you know. And, um, you know, I, in an ideal world, you've got to be knocking them out when, when, when you're fighting as a B-side. Um, so I, I was quite worried, but on the other side, he was landing his punches. He was outworking him. You know, I, I had the commentary right next to me, and you could hear the punch stats. And Tommy was outworking him. You know, quite you know quite a reasonable amount. So I was just hoping that you know we had God on our side, and we had um, you know the right people judging, and, and people were going to be fair. I, you know, I was a bit skeptical about the American judge, obviously. But I thought, you know, with the other two judges, you know, hopefully, you know, nothing's going to go wrong and, and we get the decision, yeah? Absolutely. Um, straight after the fight, talk of a rematch straight away. Um, also, another name that was linked was KSI. So KSI called out Jake, but also Tommy had mentioned KSI's name. Um, has there been any discussions or any talk about who may be next and or is the rematch next? Is, it, is there a contractual obligation for a rematch clause potentially or...? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I I'm not too fully involved in in the contracts and stuff, but I do believe there was a that Jake put a rematch clause in it. So, um, I, I, and I believe he may have activated it. He, he may have he, he may have already be starting the process. But obviously, I mean, Tommy's coming down from cloud cloud nine, so I don't even think he's far about it. But I know what the press are like you say KSI was mentioned. Um, obviously, Tommy's. You know, I can't, I can't see him turning down such big paydays to go and fight someone like KSI because I don't think he's probably as good as Jake. Jake's improved massively over the years, um, and he's still improving. He's a workhorse. He's got some good guys around him, um, good ex-professional fighters who know the games, and good. You know, good. He's got a good team, and he seems to be progressing at a decent rate. Um, so, you know, it probably would be better, more ideal to go the KSI route. I'm not sure, you know, that's something he has to decide because Styles do make fights as well. I don't even watch KSI. I, I don't think I've seen him fight. Um, but just I see, yeah. But um, it's crazy because, like, by getting that win, it's secured him. He's, he's sort of, like, in a very good position to make some very good money, you know. So it's just crazy and it's crazy. Just the last question from me, Alex. If it's the rematch against Jake Paul, does does 
Tommy get the job done easier, or does it? Is it a repeat still? And is it going to be easier because he's going to have less pressure? He's not going to have that three year of pent up pressure as we mentioned earlier. Would it be a bit easier for him to go into this a rematch? Yeah, completely. It'd be it'd be hundred times easier. What we saw in the gym, we only saw glimpses on the night. Um, in the gym, he was sparring really well, um, and, and and he was he was really dominating the spars. In the fight, he didn't fully dominate. He, he dominated the fight, but if the Tommy that was boxing in the gym probably could have, you know, could have he, he could have boxed. Um, I think he probably would have stopped him, you know, mid rounds. But you could see the pressure on him, and you could feel it. You know, it, there was so much pressure from them both. Um, such a big event, so I think in the rematch, Tommy will be a little bit more relaxed. Look more confident. His, his inactivities never helped him. I think he had one fight in about eighteen months, and he did an exhibition. So that that's a killer for any young fighter uh, inactivity. So I do believe that you know you'll definitely see a massive improvement from Tommy. But Jake does train hard, but the, the, there's plenty more to come from Tommy. Definitely, yeah, yeah. Even though I still feel he boxed well, he outworked him. His jab was landing lovely. Some good footwork made made Jake miss with some you know crude shots. I think Jake took a light bulb out a couple of times, um, you know, hitting some of them lights, the way he was swinging. So, yeah, I think we'll see an improvement definitely with Tommy and, you know, the same result, but maybe a stoppage. Fantastic. Well, Alex, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you.